Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. <laughs> doing all right. How are you? Yeah, doing all right. I think that's I think that's fair. Um, we don't we don't need to we don't need to goof around to the, at the top of the show here. Ohio well, State lost. Um, and I tell you what, I don't feel I don't feel terrible about it. Um, obviously wanted to win. That goes without saying. Um, this is a game in which nobody gave Ohio State a chance. And a field goal away from winning. And sometimes that field goal goes in. And sometimes the field goal doesn't go in. And on, on this particular day, that field goal didn't go in. Ohio State did this without... Their best wide receiver. Uh, their second best wide receiver for the last quarter of the game. And not their two best running backs, as we didn't even see Mayan Williams much after the first quarter. Um, obviously, Henderson was not available. Um and then Cade Stover out after his um, first catch, too. Oh, so you're I was, out, you're out I your, was getting you're there. Out your you're, out with, you're out with your top two receivers, your top two running backs, your top tight end. Tight end and you almost won it. And you almost won and it. You, you almost won it in despite of some, um, I'll just call it some shitty shitty calls that um, I don't, did, that <laughs> should have been called. Said it too. <laughs> yeah it's, i i i'll I mean, listen i know this is i know this is going to be a controversial take mm -hmm. i don't think any of the calls were wrong so I, that, that I, one there so i i i, 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 I do I think georgia got those. that first down um and as much as you can call the marvin harrison the hit on marvin harrison that, that was dirty that was that was the game changer, Jared. I think that so. Was, that, I that, think that so. Resulted, that resulted, but, but it was shoulder to shoulder, to a potential touchdown. It was that a right there is the game. Okay, let's see. That was spikes. The game spikes there. has put a video in here. I mean, it doesn't have to be helmet to helmet. If you look, Jared, well, you you can't see that in the chat there, but um, yeah, I know, but it, it's it does it's a, it's a shoulder. To be, to... It does not have to be helmet to helmet. No, I don't know why people are thinking that. It does not have to be helmet. Doesn't helmet. have it's, to be. It, it's a defensive player hitting defenseless to the neck or head area. But he and he didn't. was defensive. He was he was defensive, or um, he was defenseless. Yeah, yeah. And he was hit by In the shoulder. Someone to to his head. That launching is, is an indicator, but he launched. Guys, the the contact was initiated shoulder to shoulder. That's it, he did not hit with the top of his head. So that's like there's two different. There's a lot of confusion because there's there's targeting is two separate things. There's targeting that's meant to per, to protect the hitter, and there's targeting that is meant to hit to protect the hit e. You will have the first, which is a blow initiated to the head or neck area that's meant to that's meant to protect the hit e and then there's what back in the day we would call spearing which is when you initiate you as the hitter initiate with the top of your helmet back in the day they called that a spear and they've combined these two things into one thing which leads to a lot of confusion um so they need to clarify, they need to do a better job of, of, of clarifying that. Um, it was, it was a vicious hit. It was an absolutely vicious hit, but it was initiated shoulder to shoulder. Um, I, I just, so I, were, so it was a lot of other plays historically do Jared. Well, or two wrongs that, don't that make exact, a right. That exact play has happened. I mean, I mean look, look at Bosa, look at the Bosa a few years ago. That wasn't targeting at all. 
and, the, and okay. they call that and they call that targeting I, too. N- no offense, Kyle. That's and what about so much that's, more vicious than that hit. So no, much more vicious. No offense, Kyle, but that's 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 what aboutism. Yes, that was about call, but this was that doesn't make that being a bad call does no, not that, mean that, you the then point. have that's to the turn point, around dude. and do another bad call. That, that's the, that's the point. Like it's so inconsistent. I feel like the yeah yeah the yeah reps don't even know don't even know what it what it should be. Like they don't know how to call it. They, I feel like whatever the refs are seeing on the field I agree. versus what the whoever is looking at the instant replays, which I agree. by the way, like why are we the viewers not able to watch them either? I ESPN like, ESPN fucked that up. In in both of the in both of those overturns, ESPN did not they went to commercial instead of showing replays. Yeah, that's fucked up. You're not going to get any disagreement from me okay. on that, and you're not going to get any disagreement from me on the on targeting being called uh, very inconsistently. You're absolutely 100% right on both of those points, Kyle. But I don't think that changes the fact that the the hit on Marvin Harrison was violent, was was vicious. You want if you want to make the claim that the Georgia player did it with intent to hurt him. Well, we can't prove that, but if you believe it, you believe it. And I'm not going to try and get you not to believe it. But the point is, is that it was initiated shoulder to shoulder. And therefore is not targeting. And like you, you can disagree with me if you want on that. I've not seen a replay yet that looks like the contact was initiated to the head or neck area. Nor do I think the Georgia guy initiated contact with the top of his head. Those are the two things. And if someone shows me a replay that convinces me otherwise, then I'll change my mind. Mm. And then the and then the other controversial call, it's I, I think I think you should have I think you should have um left it to however the the um, umpire or the referee called it on the field because there was no concrete evidence to overturn it, and that and that's the whole point of of review is that right. you have to have in, you have to have indisputable evidence to overturn it. And again, and by the way, the re- fucking it up, not yeah. showing the replays. Yeah, how, how, going to commercial instead no, of showing no the replays. Knew. No one, no one knew. No one knew until way after the fact. And even when you look there, there's no concrete evidence to overturn what was called on the field. It was fucked up. And by the way, the replay officials had a rough day all over. Like as much as yeah. I don't want to be like, no, as much as I don't want to support the Michigan game too. Yeah. They, that, they, that they screwed, was... they screwed Michigan on a couple replays as well. Um, now I'm for that. Fuck Michigan. But yeah, like they, that, that, touchdown that they overturned against Michigan was yeah his butt hit before he crossed but he didn't on that touchdown he didn't have that he didn't have the ball possessed until he was in the end zone he didn't have possession thank you spikes yeah um replay officials had a had a bad day what was it the last play too that could have been targeting too and that would have extended potentially gave a chance for Michigan to potentially win it as well they, yeah. they got messed up and they, they got they got again fucked up from from the uh, referees as well too. It was, I, it was a terrible terrible refereeing day on Sunday or Saturday. Yeah, and I, I I don't we've spent too much time complaining about the refs. I don't like complaining about the refs. I don't have a strong opinion one way or the other on that Michigan hit. Um, I I don't think I saw I I, I don't think I saw anything. But that's not to say that it was or it wasn't. It's just to say, I don't know if I saw it enough. Um, But either way, like Ohio State started off in this game here, Jared, Ohio State started off pretty good up 21 to seven. And you're like, Oh shit. They playing really well. They got the, uh, got the turnover from, from Bennett scored a touchdown going up 21 to seven. You're like, okay, okay. Ohio State's, our state's um doing some things. They're doing things here. And then here comes Georgia scoring 17 straight points. And then a great answer right before half 
for Ohio State going down the field there to get the um, to get the touchdown to um, to X right before right before halftime there. That was a great yeah. great response from Ohio State right before halftime. And then and then right and then the start of the second half, Jared. What was that? Two. That was like two straight uh, three and outs. Yeah, from Ohio State's defense, and we're like, oh, no, nose, nose came out, made adjustments, and right. I thought overall did pretty, pretty good job. I mean, we want to see better. I mean, you, you look at the final numbers. Yeah, it's <laughs> you, you definitely want to see the defense play a little bit better. But these are two elite teams going at it, and in college football, elite right. offenses will always um, be better than elite defenses. It's yeah. just. That's just how it is. In the NFL, it's the opposite. An elite defense will stifle an elite offense most of the time. There are exceptions, obviously, but most of the time. In college football, because the talent pool just isn't as deep, it's just not. Um, and it's harder to play defense than it is to play offense. Because you can, if if one of your receivers isn't great, you just don't throw to them. You know what I mean? But on the defensive side, if one of their cornerbacks is, is not great, then you can target them all day, which Ohio state did, by the way. Um, let's see. Stewart says Jim Knowles need to figure out how to stop a run game. Um, Spike says their run game is next level. Chop says, don't care. Uh, we have athletes that should make up for it. No, that's, that's not how this works in the playoffs. You don't have quote unquote athletes to make up for it. You're, you're playing equal competition. This isn't, this isn't Georgia Southern. This is exactly like what day day said leading up to then it scheme it properly. They did. They stifled State, the run State, in the State, second State, half. Ohio State had to win their one-on-one -on -one matchups. And we saw there was a number of times Ohio State did not. Right. I, and like in an unfortunate situation. And I love ransom. He's one of the best players on the defense this year. Dude tripped. Mm-hmm. Sorry, shit happens. Like it sucks, but they're human beings, and sometimes you trip. God, that sucks. Uh, you don't feel nearly as bad about it as Ransom does. I'll tell you that much. And by the way, yes. look, the running, the Georgia running so back had a running touchdown. Back, so did the yeah, running you say back it. from Georgia too. Um, McIntosh, he 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 ended up um, um, with the getting tackled from the turf monster as well. That sucked, but we beat Bam on the same thing. Yep, sure did. It's 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 football. That that field, by the way, for an indoor field had to have sucked. How doesn't I don't know. It seems like a lot of guys were tripping. I, I know Mind Williams was having issue getting grip on the field. They went and had to cut the tape off of his off of his shoes. Um the socks. <laughs> the socks off of his so <laughs> well and, and tape and tape. Socks and, and the, tape. Yeah. Um why why is footing bad in a dome? How does that happen? But it looked I mean, for both teams the foot the footing looked bad. Don't, don't, don't be surprised if we're going to hear a lot more of it about the the push to go to all natural grass again. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Um that might be Here. difficult for the the domers. Can can you use grow lights? Can you put in some, no, I mean, seriously, you can just get LED grow lights. Like you build a billion and a half dollar stadium. You can afford some grow LEDs. Am I right? Does grow, do grow, grow LEDs work on grass? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, it, the, the field looked bad, but it doesn't matter because both teams were playing on it. Um, yes. I mean, it does matter. It's inexcusable. You're a one and a half billion dollar stadium. The, the, the turf shouldn't be shit, but it's not. That's not an excuse. Both teams were playing on it. So that's both yeah. a big deal, but also not a big deal, if that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. Georgia was used to it. Uh, well, they, they they had played on it once before, twice before, right? Didn't they play? This is yeah, the they played time. Oregon in, in there too. This is the third time. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. they played it uh, just a month ago. Yeah. Um, but regardless, I, I don't care. It's not an excuse um, by any means. Uh, so so lo looking at this here, Jared, I felt like Ohio State was that bend don't break type of uh, defense, which um, which I advocated in, for, which worked which worked in a, in a few scenarios, uh, forced Georgia to kick a few field goals, missed a couple of them, 
And yeah, I thought the defense did what they need to now. Was there plays that wish it got back? Yeah. A couple of the, like the, the trip um, from ransom or the missed tackle or the long run or the couple of long runs there. It, yeah, th- those, those suck, but I thought overall, I thought they did a decent job and gave Ohio State a chance to to win it there and ultimately should have, could have won it, but. Several dropped INTs. Um, I don't think any of them were easy. Like the Cam Brown one kind of looked like he just straight up dropped it, but the Georgia player dropped it first so that by the time it got to Cam Brown's hands, it was doing all sorts of weird shit. Um, that's a way tougher catch than it appears to be because he doesn't even know it's tipped. By the way, Cam Brown uh, caught a lot of shit from Ohio State fans this year, and I'm not going to say deserved or undeserved. Played an excellent football game. Cam Brown played an excellent football game. Um, you just, when, when a guy catches a lot of shit from fans, we we also have to point out when they played well. Um, speaking of with, speaking of, CJ Stroud is amazing and I love him and I will miss him. Um, yeah. Played like a fucking champion. 300, 348 yards, four touchdowns, and made some gutsy runs in that last, uh, yeah, in that last drive there to potentially win that game. Like, I don't want to hear any shit about, no. about people um, giving CJ and his, effort and no. and all that like he'll, he'll come down he'll go down as one of the best uh quarterbacks at ohio state history now he, he won't he, he doesn't he, he should he doesn't have he doesn't have the wins there that some of the other quarterbacks have had right which will which will hurt him but as far as when it came to his precision his accuracy just on point just on point accuracy um it's next next level there Unfortunately, he won't go down as one of the greats because he was 0-2 against Michigan, which isn't fair because he played excellent in both of those games. He lost. He, he went to the playoffs and lost, which because he's a quarterback, they'll put on him, but they, he'll have one with, but they that, shouldn't. He'll have one thing that he has better than uh, than uh, Justin Fields. Uh, that's a playoff. What's that? And that's a playoff win. Uh, Justin Fields had a playoff win. CJ Stroud did not. You're right. I'm getting my ears mixed up. Never mind. Yep. Carry on. There you go. <laughs> uh, Very- CJ Stroud went to New York twice. Justin he Fields did. can't say that. He did. Yes. Um, so, look, look at look at our previous notes, Jared. Here. Um, we we're, were talking about. Uh, but uh, sorry, but Kyle, before you go there, I just want to acknowledge something that uh, Stewart said. Um, The defense played an excellent game other than giving up 42 points. That's an incredibly funny sentence, but I also agree with it. Like look at the Michigan and TCU game. Look how high scoring that one was and Michigan having a great defense too. It's just when you have this level here, it offense is going to just be far superior than deep than the defenses. Yeah. But like, like Kyle said, um, in college football, and this is just the truth, in college football, uh, a elite offense will defeat an elite defense. It just will. Look no further than Ohio State, Ohio State scoring 41 on Georgia. Look no further than this amazing Georgia defense, and Ohio State put 41 points on them. Uh, Georgia's off. Everyone talks about Georgia's defense and I get it. Jalen Carter and crew. I get it. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, so excellent defense, so t- but, but, but t- Kyle, about- hold on. But, but Kyle, it also needs to be stated. This is an amazing, and I mean, amazing offensive line. Ohio state played two of the best offensive lines. No, the best two offensive lines in college football, their last two games. And like, if you want to talk about like Ohio, why did Ohio State lose to Michigan the past two years? What changed? What changed, in my opinion, is that Michigan had one of the best offensive lines you've seen 
in the Big Ten ever playing at Michigan for the past two years. And in college football, that, that just accounts for so much. And Ohio State's defense played well, considering uh, they, they were not doing well against the run in the first half. They made some adjustments. They played well against the run in the second half. They got more pressure and had, and absolutely, in my opinion, had Stenson Bennett rattled for a bit in that game, because Stenson Bennett took more pressure in that game than he's taken all year, like, combined. The defense, I thought, played incredibly well, and it's weird saying that considering they gave up 42 points, but this is a really, really good Georgia offense. Wildly efficient Georgia offense. They don't ever really seem spectacular. They don't ever really seem flashy, but they're just wildly efficient. And that's exactly what we said during Know Your Enemy last week, and it's it's and, just true. And Stetson Bennett played a great game as well, too. It was just Stroud and Bennett really going at it, just blow after blow. And, I mean, Bennett's the one that really um, kept them in the game there. He made some great throws when he needed to. Uh, yeah, I mean, you got to give your hats off to Bennett there. Uh, Spike so, says that's how semifinals go. Once a team gets a little bit of leverage, the points come in bunches. Yeah, it was a super streaky game. First, Georgia had all the momentum. Then Ohio State had all the momentum. Then Georgia had all the momentum. Then Ohio State had all the momentum. And then uh, Ohio State missed a kick. Yep. Um, so in our and that's, just, enemy episode, that's just how shit goes. In our Know Your Enemy episode, Jared, um, like a heavyweight had, fight, win some rounds, lose some rounds. Yep. You had CJ Stroud as your player to watch. Mentioned 348 yards, four touchdowns. I had a Mecca as my player to watch because everybody was going to be watching Marvin Harrison Jr. And look, Mecca had a great game. Team in receptions, led the team in yardage as well. Mecca, Mecca had a great game. game. So great game. Really, so did so did Fleming. Fleming had a great game yeah, too. 100. percent all the wide receivers played um, exceptionally well. Absolutely. And, the, and then enemy players to watch. Um, I think this is where we kind of missed out. <laughs> um, I disagree. You had Jalen Carter, who, yeah. who was very effective, even though it doesn't show in the stats. He only had I one tackle. And by the way, but, like, I don't know how, I mean, Ohio State basically didn't try to run the game, didn't try to run most of the time. Um Mine Williams had three carries. Xavier Johnson had six. Dallin Hayden had nine. Um, Hayden and Xavier had 4.8 and 4.7. Um, Mine Williams got the touchdown, um, but was having was having struggles health wise yeah, in that game. Yeah, I agree. I agree. These spikes. Um, Hayden had some good runs um, in that fourth quarter. He, he had some pretty good runs there. Um, I when when I say enemy to watch, Kyle, when I say enemy to watch, I say Ohio State needs to beat this guy if they want to win the game. And taking care of Jalen Carter, and I've been cr sometimes cruel to the interior of the Ohio State offensive line this year. I have been incredibly tough on them. They had a great game last night. Mm -hmm. The reason why Ohio State was in position to win the game is because they kept Jalen Carter in check. So that enemy to watch, in my opinion, was the correct call because Ohio State did neutralize him and that put them in and, great position. Yeah. And then mine, Jared, it was um, it was Brock. Ugh, it was Brock Bowers. Which was a and good they, call. They kind of held him in check, too. He only had four receptions for 60 yards. Two of those were devastating, though. They, they were, but. Uh, we uh, gave up 8.88 yards per play. Tell me again about our defense. It was early in the game. Ohio State played very bend, but don't break. Um, they were letting Georgia get chunk yards and then sort of didn't, like shoring stuff up once you got into field goal range. And by the way, it worked. For the most part, it worked. Um, they forced yeah, yeah. Georgia to kick a bunch of field goals. Yes, yeah, so you say, yeah, we gave up 8.88 yards per play. Yes, letting. 
we put we put up 8.5 yards per play against this out of a defense. When was the last time Georgia led up 8.5 yards per play? That's just how this game went. This is again, this is what happens in college football. Just good enough to lose. The strategy worked. And when it stopped working, they switched it up in the second half and they started playing aggressive. And the aggression worked. And Till a guy fell down and you're in cover zero and you were one on one. That's the thing. Do you play a shell and keep all that stuff in front of you, but let them get five, six, seven, eight yards. And then, you know, try and force them to kick a field goal or try and force them to make a mistake. Or do you play hyper aggressive, force some three and outs, stifle the run, but then you're screwed if one guy falls over. That's the balance game. You, you can't. You can't have two deep safeties and also cover the medium zone and also blitz your linebacker. Like, you can't do all of the things. You only have 11 players. You, you can't do it all. Are you going to play hyper aggressive and risk someone falling over and giving up a 76 yard touchdown? Because that's what happens when you play super aggressive. If you're going to play more conservative, guess what? They're going to get that underneath shit a lot. That's just how it goes. That's that's college football. And I mean, that's football in general, but that's really college Brian football. Day, Brian Day had to do that. He had to do that to to potentially win this game and could have won this game too. And it was because of the plays that he called there. And unfortunately, some of those those two really good calls. Um, give Kirby count. Smart, man. Give Kirby Smart credit on that, and and whoever the coach was that that called that down to him, that's a huge play. That that is a amazing big brain play by Georgia. You have to give them credit on that. That 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 timeout to prevent the uh, fake punt. They're going to be talking about that for a long time. God, someone someone up in the booth earned their paycheck on that alone. That 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 was big brain. That was well played. Again, Jared. like guys, I I this is I took Ohio State fans to task on this before. Sometimes it's not you. Sometimes it's them. And God, Ryan Day dialed that up perfectly, and he called it in a real ballsy, aggressive situation. They were inside their Ohio State was inside their own forty. Yep. That that was that's aggression. That took balls, and it was gonna work. Man, they got the timeout in time. It's yep. tough. So, speaking of that chop daddy, let's get into our grading, Jared. Okay. Coaching. Coaching as a whole, I'd, I'd probably give like an A. I'd probably give an A overall for coaching. I give an A+. Plus. Uh, it, it's just, <clears throat> yeah. yeah they, they came in with a good, good game plan and executed for the most part, but was just short it was just short you gotta go chop see ya i assume that's what All that right. means uh off offensive coaching this is where i'm giving my a plus to the offensive coaches just stout uh very very impressed with the game plan they came in knew that you weren't going to really run in this team against this team you had to you had to pass in order to run and a lot of the runs weren't yeah. there, but he still, they still kind of stuck it through. And I think yeah. they, I think they ran the appropriate amount of plays. I mean, when I, they ran the ball an appropriate number of plays. Um, mm -hmm. I, they, they did it just enough to keep Georgia honest, but at the same time, they knew that's not where they were going to make their hay. Um, I, I think they they did an excellent job with the offensive game plan. Again, I, I, you know, they probably studied what LSU did to get some yardage. I, you know, that that worked to a certain that was not to a certain extent. The offense had a great day. Um, you know, maybe there's now holes in this Georgia defense that people have learned to exploit. Um. I, yeah, but the offensive coaching staff gets an A plus, and I'll jump the gun on this one, Kyle, and give Stroud an A plus as well. The quarterbacks yep. or CJ Stroud gets an A plus. Yep. 
same here. Don't need a don't need to uh that that that. <laughs> that that pass in the back of the end zone to Marvin Harrison Jr. was insane. Like they they had they had Reese Davis like, oh, oh nope, that's incomplete. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> when you can make Reese Davis look dumb, I'm all for that. Reese um, Davis was a fucking idiot. Yeah. The, it, On, by the way, the the halftime guys, Desmond and a former Georgia linebacker, defensive lineman, I don't care. Um, we're like, oh, this is the best. This is the best uh, I've seen stuff from CJ Stroud this game. I haven't seen. Shut the. If you're seeing things from CJ Stroud in this game that you've quote unquote never seen before, especially at halftime, then you haven't watched Ohio State and you're fucking stupid and you need to pull your you're, head out of the SEC ass. You're not doing your job. Yeah. Oh, and, and was it Reese too that was fat shaming Brian Williams too? What the fuck? Really? If you're going to be fat shaming, you might as well be talking about Jalen Carter. God damn. I don't remember hearing the, I, I saw, I saw people complaining about that. I don't remember hearing the comments, so I'll, I'll remain silent on that. You know, to kind of take a line out of you, um, Jared, what was it? Um, a few months ago when you were talking about, or yeah, when you were talking about, uh, our good old, good old buddy, um, Jimmy Harbs. Reese Davis, you can go fuck yourself. I'm gonna have to turn monetization off on this one. Um, <laughs> nor normally it's just me doing it, but you're getting double the fun on the f bombs tonight, everybody. All right, offensive linemen. I'd give the offensive linemen probably a B. This was I thought they did a good job, not not a great job, but I thought they I, did a they did a good they did a good hard disagree. Job. But man, hey, if. The, that last drive, that last drive, though, CJ Stroud was running for his life. And yeah, and, and granted that Georgia um, called a lot of blitzes to try to pressure CJ Stroud. But I maybe maybe I'll say a B plus. Like I th I thought they did a pretty yeah. good job. Not not an excellent job, which would give an A grading, but a, but a I disagree. Really pretty good job. You have to consider. Again, we grade based off of expectation, right? Yes. Yes. But the expectation isn't just limited to the offensive line and who they are. The expectation also has to consider who they're going up against. This is where was Jalen Carter all night? A couple of times he got through. CJ Stroud did an excellent job avoiding him. Um, I. I, Kyle, I hard disagree. Considering the level of competition they played, the offensive line played well above my expectation for them. I'm giving them a straight A. Mm. Okay. All right. That's fine. That's fine. We can disagree. We can absolutely disagree. All right. Running backs. <laughs> Rossi had several key blocks too. Man, though, that illegal... We're, 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 We'll get to the tight ends. We'll get to the tight ends. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I know. But that, that illegal forward motion was killer, man. Running backs. Running backs, Jared. That was almost as bad as the punt. That was almost as bad as the timeout on the punt. What would you grade the what would you grade the running backs, Jared? Almost non-applicable. Like they just weren't much of a factor in this game. Um like a like a like a B, I guess, a B plus. Well, I just think they, they, they weren't called on that much. Like, it's hard for me to say they were. Oh, you're going lower. Yeah, I'm, I'm going I'm going with a going with a C here I, um, and only a C and only a C because of what uh, Xavier Johnson, which isn't a true running back, but but he played a lot of the running back position, too. Um, he ended up having, what is this here? Uh, 70, 72 yards and a touchdown as well for, for the game. But yeah, like, like you said, they were pretty much non-existent, uh, you know, a bump. But they were like non-existent because that was the, that was the, that was the design. You know what I mean? Like okay. you had it's two fine, separate. Fine, but I'm, I'm great. I'm, I'm fine. Yes. Again, 
consider the defense they were playing and you had two running backs, 4.8 and 4.7 per carry. It's not their fault that they just weren't a part of the game plan. Right. What would you, you, you said a B plus. Yeah. All right. All right. Wide receivers. A, a plus. plus. Yeah. A plus. A plus. There's, there's no, there's nothing to disagree with that. Um, nothing. For what it's worth, if Marvin and like, I, this isn't a, a wildly original take, I'm sure a thousand people have said it in the past 24 hours. Ohio State wins if Marvin Harrison doesn't leave the game. I'll I'll Ohio say State, it. Ohio State wins if they kept the call on the field. I'm not going to complain about the refs, Kyle. Uh, we already did that. I don't like complaining about the refs. Um, but all right, tight end, tight ends here, Jared. Uh, tight ends stat wise had two catches for 16 yards, but but boy, I I thought. I thought Rossi and Royer did a pretty good job um, helping protect uh, CJ Stroud in the pocket there. Yeah, there were also some miscues. Um, and it's just hard with Stover going out. And yeah, I mean, you had. Uh, man, you, I mean, you, you had to go to Joe Royer, who hasn't played all year. You rolled into that game minus a tight end. Then Stover got hurt. So you're down to your third. And I mean, Rossi, Rossi's a fullback. Let's just call that as it is. We we include him into the tight ends because he's technically a tight end, but he's playing fullback. So you are essentially down to your third tight end. Like totally out of nowhere. Pretty immediately in the game. Um, which I think caused some issues in pass protection um, at times. Um, yeah, it was not a, I don't know, that, that considering the position Rossi was put into, I thought he did a great job. Um, it's, it's, pro it's not a fair expectation that he was going to be 100% ready for that game as a, you know, a guy. So considering the position he was put into, I thought he did a, a good job. I'm disappointed overall with the performance of the tight ends, but... Like a guy got hurt. What are you going to do with that? You just have to adapt. Tight end, though. A B. I don't know. It's it's just tough because my expectations at the beginning of the game aren't really fair because, again, Stover left almost immediately. I hope he's OK. Have we gotten any updates on him? They took him to the hospital. When a, when a farm boy stops the job in the middle of the job, you know you're in trouble. Far, farm boys get hurt, don't get me wrong, but they normally finish the job first. Like, Ohio State tight end Cade Stover MRI on Saturday night came back negative. The MRI revealed back spasms. Does an MRI reveal a back spasm? I guess that's news to me. There's someone someone tagged Gangland. Don't really. Um... <laughs> I don't think it does. Yeah, like an MRI doesn't. Anyway, um, we, we at least know all the bones are in place because I know. Like one yeah. of our doctor friends in the discord server was a little bit concerned about a slip disc, but I guess the x-ray would have shown that and the x-rays came back negative. Um, right, yeah, moving on to the defense here, Jared, defensive coaching. As weird as it is to say this. Statistically, I, this game looks terrible for the defense. But I I don't hate the job at all. I don't hate the job at all that Knowles did. They were getting gashed up front, which again, this is an amazing core of running backs, an amazing starting five up front for Georgia. But they adjusted, and that's what Ohio State never did in 2020 or 2021. If you were getting beat somewhere, guess what? You're getting beat there for the entire game because our defensive coaching staff in previous years weren't able to make adjustments. Ohio State came in with a game plan. It didn't work. They adjusted, and then it worked. And then Georgia adjusted and it stopped working. And then Ohio State adjusted back and it started working again. Like, but that that's what happens. 
And again, for the thousandth time in college football, an elite offense will beat an, an elite defense. I, I don't a minus, a minus for me. Yeah. I think a minus is fine. Really? I think yeah, it's fine. It's, I, I think, I think the, the game plan was, I think is what was needed to be done. I mean, there, there was, there was some calls that it should, it shouldn't have been in. like, uh, you shouldn't have done a, a, um, a one safety deep in that, in that particular play or whatever the case but, may be. You're, you're, you're going you're gonna to have, you're going to have those, but I think as an overall job, I, I was, if really, you're blitzing the stop to run, you're going to be thin yeah, on the back yeah, end. I was, yeah, I was, but I was really pleased with the, the game plan that they tried to slow Georgia down and they, and they did to, to an extent. Yeah. And then once they figured out that wasn't working, they went hyper aggressive and that worked for a while. And yep. then, right. and then someone falls and it's just, that's just how football is. All right. Defensive ends, Jared. I, I thought mean, defensive ends played incredibly well. Zach Harrison, Zach Harrison played, played very, very well in this game. Ohio State was a few plays, and this is, I, I think, something that Ryan Day says, and I think he said it again last night. Um, you know, sometimes you're two or three plays away from from winning a game. Um, was it the was it George's last drive? Um, that Harrison almost got that ball out on. On Bennett's back, yeah, inches away. That's the game. Uh, you're a couple inches away. Zach Harrison was right there. Again, it's a game of inches. Zach Harrison almost won that game. But, yep. again, sometimes you're just two or three plays away. It, you know, if, if if Harrison makes contact with that ball, if the, if the kick is better, if... If... Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. doesn't get hurt if uh, if if, if uh, you know your safety doesn't slip when when you know turning back. Um, it's that's just football, right, what, man. What would, that's just football. Right, what would you grade the defensive ends then? I, I, I say A plus. A. Going against one of the best offensive lines they've ever faced, A plus. All right now, defensive tackle is out. I say a little bit different there. I yeah. probably grade the defensive tackle is a little bit less here, probably like a B. I mean, again, you have to consider the competition they were going up against. I'll give them a I'll give them a B plus. Okay. Spike says a right. C again. Spike, you have to you have to consider the competition. Um, and I, and still, I know they struggled at times. They did. They they still, did. Um. They, they, I was hoping to see a little bit more push in, in the interior there, but I mean, yeah. Uh, linebackers, Jared. Uh, Steele had a great game. Eichenberg had a great game. I I don't have any complaints from, for the linebackers. Um, I, I don't have any complaints. Like Eichenberg got quote unquote beat deep that one play. But he made the tackle. He was in. He was in a deep. He was just. He was in a deep. Uh, he was in a deep zone. He was never gonna. He was never gonna stay with him. But he was stayed with him enough to make the tackle. That's as much as you can ask him in a situation like that. Um, a couple missed tackles in the first half on the gashing runs. You're playing. You're playing elite running backs. But still, this it's going to happen. If you if you want to be that elite team, Jared, I know you got you yourself have to be elite. I, I, I don't know. want this to turn. I don't want this to turn into a a James. But he Franklin also made. Like, well, we're not elite. But Ohio State's elite. Ohio I mean, State's elite. Ohio State's defense is not elite. Well, that's that's not a that's not a wild that, statement that's, to that's make. The next level. That's the next. That's what twenty twenty three needs to be. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. And that that's the thing. Like Knowles made amazing strides with this defense this year. Anyone who's mad at Knowles, you have a goldfish fucking memory. Yep. You, you've already forgotten how disorganized and straight up messy this team was last year. Mm -hmm. And right, to, to have brought them as far as he has in a year is amazing. 
linebackers, Jared? Uh, or, excuse me, not linebackers. Yeah, I didn't, what would you grade them? Uh, A minus. Okay. And I, I, I gave them an A. Yeah. All right. And corners, Jared. Hmm. The corners here. I what see what you, you put. I see what you put in there. I don't agree. Um, I thought the corners played well. When they were when they were matching up man on man, they were doing well. Zones are a little bit tougher. Um, I thought Cam Brown had his best game of the year against Georgia. Uh, Burke got beat a couple times, but the times he got beat, he seemed to be either in a zone or playing back. So like it was just in the game plan to let him catch the ball short. Um, no DPI. Yeah, no. Yeah. Was there one defensive pass interference or zero pass defensive pass interferences? I think I there might have been one. I think there might have been one there. But I don't think it was on the corners, was it? If I don't think so. No, I, yeah, I don't I don't think so. Yeah. Ohio State finished four penalties for 24 yards. That, That's that excellent. Very disciplined. Probably the most disciplined team. I didn't discipline game I've seen from this team all year. And by the way, I, I that's the thing I meant to mention when I gave the coaching staff an A plus. I just forgot. Like, but that's a factor for sure. Right. In well, that, I I gave the corners a B minus. I, I mean, you 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 let up almost four hundred four hundred passing yards there. That's I don't I can't give you I can't I, give you higher than that. I'm I don't sorry. think that's on the corners though. I think you're you're putting a lot on the corners, giving a lot of responsibility to the corners for things the corners didn't fail on. Oh, um, and, that, and that's why I gave the safeties a C. I, well, I gave them a lower one there. So, yeah, I mean, I I, I give the cornerbacks, I I think like a B plus or an A minus. Um, they weren't spectacular. They didn't like make a bunch of great plays, but they also just didn't get beat. Most of the times when you saw Ohio State getting like gashed in the passing game, it was the safeties. Yep. Um, you want to, you want to write that down for me? In the, Which one in the for each? Well, I, in the corners, I gave a B plus. All right. Safety's safety. not so, man, the safeties, I feel like we're the opposite when there was a big play given up. I do feel like it was them, but I think they also played incredibly well. R Ransom, like I, how, how can I, how can I give him shit just cause he tripped? That was that was that lots of people were tripping on that field and it sucks. It's 76 yard touchdown, but he's a human being on a what was apparently a slippery field. What am I going to do shit on him for that? Like he didn't he didn't mentally screw up. It's just his feet didn't quite catch. Yep. He made several key tackles. Yes, he did spikes. Um. I thought Hip uh, thought Hickman had a a very good game. Ransom had a game where he did a lot of things right, but also some things wrong. Um, not exactly sure where McAllister was most of the night. Um, yeah, I, like a B minus. Okay, yeah, and I, I gave them a C. It just, yeah, not not what it needs to be. It yeah, he just teams. slipped when he didn't have any help. Yep. It was just special team, Jared. Um I don't know. It's I, I don't I, I, I don't you, want you, to you, join you, you, in what is a chorus of people being mad at at a I mean, kicker for missing a fifty yard field goal. He was and including this one that he missed at a 50 yard, he, this year he is, he was oh for, th was it this year or his career? I, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to look, but I saw in here, he's oh for three. I think oh for, yeah, oh for three. Oh for three in 50 his, yarders. Um, his 50 yarders. Oh, in his career, Jared, his career. Oh for five. He's oh for five. Yeah. Well, let me, let me everywhere, say everywhere, everywhere else he is he is 
pretty much money yeah. everywhere else. I mean, they there's just, a there's a reason why they always had a different guy doing kickoffs. Not a, just a, not a super strong legged guy. Um, and like we can go into a conversation of like, well, if he's not good from 50, well, first off, he had plenty of leg on that. It's not like the ball was mm -hmm. short. Um, and also you're kicking in a dome. You say, oh, he's 0 for 5 kicking 50 yard field goals. How many of those are in like Big Ten conditions versus a dome? Well, in one of those field goals he made, Jared, it was a 48 one. Right. Yeah, by the way, he hit he hit the 48 yarder earlier in the game with ease. So you can be like, yeah, he if he's he never hit a 50 good. yarder, why was Ohio State da 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 da? He was he was nailing him from 50 in practice. He hit a 48 yarder in absolute ease. And again, 0 for 5 from 50. How many of those were indoors? How many of those were indoors? It's a it's a completely two two situations in which kicking is a completely different game. Inside a dome and in Denver. You, you can just kick the ball further. Every NFL record you've ever seen for longest field goal was either kicked in Denver or in a dome. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's totally the truth. Yep. So I'd, I'd probably give special teams. God, it, it, it's tough, but I guess like a B plus. I thought that, or just, I'll just say a solid B. I'll just say a B. I, I, yeah, Hunting, hunting did a pretty good job. Um, other than the 50 yarder, um, Noah did what he needed there. Yeah, there was, I think there might have been one punt return, punt, punt return that got returned um, pretty well. Yeah, but but it, that wasn't really to the punters um, or even well, the, the cup team um, fault because he punted it right at the back of his own end zone, so he couldn't do his normal steps to to punt it normally and to get time for the players to get down the field too. So, but yeah, I'd yeah. say a B. Uh, B minus. Okay. All right. And um, we'll wrap it up, Jared, and give our Buckeye leaves. Offense. Stroud. Stroud. <laughs> Are you going to give it to Stroud? Um, I'll, I'll find somebody else, Jared. You, you, well, you, you can do Stroud and I'll give it to Marvin Harrison Jr. Okay. I just, let's, let's mix them up. That's all. All right. And defense. Zachary Harrison, I thought had mm -hmm. consistent pressure most of the night. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll give mine to, I'll give mine to Chambers. I, he, he made, some, he, made turnover. Great, he made some great, um, um, great open field tackles yep. and he had that interception as well. The yeah, only turnover of the game. Yep. And the although as a former, as a former running back, he should have returned that for a touchdown. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's a joke. And the wild card, Jerry, who would you give the wild card to? Ryan day. God damn. I was going to say that. <laughs> uh, one of the things I talked about during I'll Kyle, I'll, I'll give a long winded explanation so you can find, or, or you can just also give it to Ryan day. That's fine. One of the things I talked about during know your enemy was will Ryan day learn his lesson from being too anal retentive during the Michigan game? Will he come out with passion, with emotion, willing to put it on the line be aggressive, be him because it's something we saw out of run out of younger Ryan Day, this sort of hyper aggressive, go get it, you know, bleed the other team out on the field, sort of evil, dark Ryan Day. And then in the big games, we've seen him tighten up a bit. He played that entire he played that entire Michigan game with his butt clenched. And one of the things we wanted to see that I wanted to see from Ryan Day in this game was can you be old Ryan Day? Can you be dark day? 
can you come out and be aggressive, be e aggressive? Yep. <laughs> and by the and we saw that. Um and I I feel a lot better. I I was never like a fuck Ryan Day, fire Ryan Day, whatever type of guy. I never, never was that. But my confidence is restored even after a loss. Mm -hmm. In a game, by the way, that most people wasn't weren't even given Ohio State a chance. No. Nope. Hey, there, 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 there were some um winners cover in the day where there there were hyping up the game and there's even some some people that are saying, Oh, what's your prediction here? Both games are going to be blowouts. It's not it's it's gonna be gonna continue the tradition of the semifinals where they're gonna be blowouts. Michigan's gonna blow out TCU, Georgia's gonna blow out Ohio State, it's gonna be just blowout after blowout. Yeah, analysts in quotes. Yeah, exactly. We call them analysts um, here. For yeah. <laughs> for my wild card, Jared? Yeah. I'll give it to X. I'll give it to Z. That's Xavier. a good call. That's a good call. Played both wide they, receiver they, they and running bit, back last there. night. Yeah, when they needed a little bit of a spurt there, it, he he got it. And man, when I when I that touchdown that he got, I saw him streak. I'm like, oh, is he open? <laughs> and I saw that. Like I was watching the, I think it was ESPNU. So I got to watch, um, got to watch down the field view as well as the normal broadcast on the right side. And as soon as I saw him streak, I'm like. I, I just pointed my throw it. And as soon as he threw it there, I had my hands up in the air. I'm like, yes, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, Xavier kind of, especially down the stretch, um, kind of almost played like that Evan Spencer sort of yeah. role for Ohio State. Um, does Xavier have eligibility left? I don't think think so I'm, I'm going to double check real quick but it's it's hard with 2020 um but i don't think so um kyle's looking it up um kyle's looking it up looking it up uh guys who do you have who are you giving who are you giving your stickers to Who you guys giving your stickers to? If he does, he'll be a wild card next year, potentially. Um, um apparently he does have one. 2020. He, yep. But he's he's on the fence about about just saying, you know, I'm just gonna call it a career there or 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 what. So we'll see. Yeah, I mean he's not. He's not someone who is, you know, NFL type talented, um, or he, but or still he, an incredibly he, he, valuable he, he, member of the team. Or he may he he may hit the portal too because he he said here, um, there's definitely an opportunity. Um, saying there's an opportunity for me to have an impact, um, whatever capacity that may be. So he could go to a lot of places in college football yeah. and start, and he the wide receiver room at Ohio state's packed. I think if yep. he, if he does think he could make that leap to the NFL, he's, he might need to go someone up somewhere else to showcase it. And by yep. the way, I won't begrudge it. No, no. All right. I think that is it, Jared. You got anything else before we wrap things up? Uh, Zach says Stroud and Harrison and his wild card being Fleming. Yeah. Uh, Fleming, Fleming had an Kyle already pointed it out earlier in the show, but yeah, Fleming had a had a really solid, very good game. Um, I know uh, caught everything, which was, was an issue for him at times this year. But he caught everything in this game and caught them cleanly and caught them while running. Um, yeah, Fleming had an excellent game. I, I think, you know, maybe those yips are behind him and he's ready to be an elite wide receiver next year. Six targets, five catches. Yeah. All right, Kyle. Um, uh, we had a bunch of people join the Discord server this week and just want to welcome everybody. Um, and 
if you can also join the discord server at discord.thesloopcast.com um aside from maybe a couple people i i i thought the discord like i don't know the moments after a buck i lost whether it be a a a, a, a social media if it's twitter or a message board or whatever things can get like real ugly and real toxic real quick and just i just want to say i appreciate my discord server i appreciate the people who are in the discord server and who return and return to our discord server um for being like one of the least toxic and um level-headed group of buckeye fans i've ever seen we kind of do a good job chasing off some of the shitters so that's that's partially us but it's also partially the people who who are the people and keep coming back and i just want to say again in the moments after a loss y'all were cool and y'all were you know disappointed and sad and angry but never never toxic and i just want to take this moment to say i appreciate i appreciate the people in our discord server for for being cool in the moments after a, a tough loss um and if, if you're looking if you the listener the watcher of this are looking for a community like that Come hang out with us, discord.thesloopcast.com. If you don't know what a Discord server is, it's like a it's like a pod of social media. It's 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 just a it's a server. It's a it's a contained little social media place. It's somewhere in between a, a group chat and a message board. It's almost kind almost kind of like those old school chat rooms, but no one's going to be asking for your age, sex, location. I don't know. They might, but um, yeah, just a moment of gratitude for our community in, like I said, sort of tough moments of the season. No age, sex, location, not as fuck. <laughs> did, did it auto correct on you? Did it auto correct on you, Zach? Blame the auto correct. It's okay. <laughs> Kyle, do you anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, no, nah, that, that, I mean that, <laughs> that that hurt that that hurt that loss really. It, it hurts. It stings right now. But I think when we really look back, it's not one of the more, more painful losses that we've seen in Ohio State history, too. Um, but yeah, I mean, it definitely stings now because you look back like, man. They had a chance to win that there. They did, but. But that's, yeah. you know, it's sometimes it lands and sometimes it doesn't. And you were just a few plays away. Yeah. You know, a thing we have already talked about. Um, mm -hmm. But again, I feel like it's one of those wins that. You know, earns you respect and earns you reputation. It felt a little like the Clemson loss. No, I don't, I don't so, think so. I actually, I, know. this, I don't, rem I don't remember. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Spikes. If that's how it felt to you, that's fine. But I'm just saying, I don't personally experience it that way. Um, I don't know what I compare this to, to be honest. I mean, the, I, the, the last, um, I mean, the loss to Alabama, I, I think pretty much every Ohio state fan was like, yeah, we, we we don't really stand a chance to beat Alabama with uh, the defense that we saw, <laughs> right? But I'd say I'd say this loss. I'm trying to think. Like, I think that last loss that I felt like really bad about. Not 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 so much this. It wasn't this year's um or 2022's um Michigan game, but I think 2021 is the one that really hit me the most. Yeah. Um, this doesn't feel nearly as bad as the Michigan loss. I think that goes without saying. Um, yep. But. And as we're speaking, Jared, it's um, halfway through the second half and the 
Buckeyes basketball team is up 54 to 30 on Northwestern. And then they will play this Thursday against <laughs> home against the number one team, Purdue. And then they're on the road next Sunday against Maryland. Huh. The 2003 game against Michigan, because it was the 100 year game and we lost. I tell you what was like, that's a topic we talk. That's it's like a fun off season topic. Like which losses stick with you the most? Yeah. 2003 Michigan is not an answer. You get a lot, but I think that's a, I think that's a, that's a, at least, um, what's the word? What, what's the phrase I'm looking for here? That's a unique answer. And it's a, uh, I think a nice thought out answer, a nice articulated answer to that. Yeah. All right. Kyle, end of the show. Yes, sir. Yes. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, tonight's ending music. We brought you by the cordial sins. They're Columbus based band. You can, uh, if you're new here, if this is your first episode. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, we don't, you can't play music here cause it's YouTube. Um, but, uh, if you're listening to the audio version of this, the song will start playing here at any moment. Uh, and the YouTube people, there is a link in the show notes to the song. If you still would like to listen to it. Um, again, if you're new here, we always play or at least link to in the case of YouTube, um, a song from an Ohio based artist at the end of the show. Uh, so that's a thing we've done since the beginning of the show. Again, if you're new here, Kyle and I've been doing this since 2015. Um, but yeah, with a quicksand, no, we won't be playing quicksand there. That song is that, is that, is that even an American that made that song, let alone an Ohioan? I don't think so. But anyway, um, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, uh, by the way, I was thinking of sandstorm, not quicksand. The sand, no, 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 no. Sa yeah, the sandstorm, not that's sandstorm, not quicksand. Okay. With all that being said, it was going to bug me like hell if I didn't say that. With all that being said, I would like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, uh, these are the cordial sins. <laughs>